guys, I'm Jess. And I'm Clayton from Beacon Design Studio. And we're here today to answer all your questions from the Bright Ideas series. Now we're going to turn to some really great questions around trends and styling when it comes to lighting in your space. First one is from somebody who's got a Victorian home, which mm -hmm. they're looking okay. to mod uh, modernise and renovate. Okay. Um, what style of lighting do you typically see in these sorts of homes, mm -hmm. and how do you keep the traditional charm of the space but also modernise it at the same time? Okay, yeah, so I mean, if you're modernising it, then yeah, you definitely start leaning towards more contemporary style of lighting. Um, I think it's better to keep the fittings a little bit more classic, mm -hmm. um, so things that aren't necessarily on trend, but things that are suited to the trend that the era represents. Yeah. Um, so play to the strengths of the materials that are being used. If there's brass, get something with hints of brass, black, um, chromes and things. So play to the strengths that are already being used mm -hmm. in the space. So our next question is, which pendants best suit a farmhouse coastal theme? Um, that you can recommend for bathrooms, dining, and kitchen areas. Um, farmhouse and coastal are definitely making a big revival at the moment, mm -hmm. and I think yep. there's common threads between those two trends that can certainly be linked together, but yeah, there definitely. is some unique things about each trend as well. Yep. Um, from a farmhouse perspective, I think that fits quite well into that industrial vibe that we've seen a lot of over the last couple of years. Mm -hmm. So it's uncomplicated, it's yep. raw, there's a lot of metal work, yep. um, you know, it could be more of a metal type pendant with, say, a glass diffuser, yeah. um, that sort of thing. Some things sort of, sort of with a few heavy colours like um, yeah. grasses and uh, antique nickels and things like that coming into Antique play. bronze has been huge. Yeah, absolutely. And that still plays into that coastal vibe with the natural materials. Yeah. So if you've got um, antique bronzes and brasses, um, using timbers and soft white glasses and things can also play into that coastal boho feel. Weaker, weaker, weaker as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you know, a lot of um, like uh, cotton fabric shade pendants and things. So um, anything that's sort of working with that light, fresh feeling that feels yeah. natural and works with the rest of the decor palette. Um, and that plays again into that farmhouse sort of feel, natural metalware and it feels organic. So yeah. I think if you're sort of playing along those strengths, uh, I think you can go wrong. Definitely. Next question, we've got somebody looking for a recommendation, Clayton. So okay. what they're looking for is a wood chandelier that could be placed um, in a void above a staircase and the staircase is made from glass and steel. What would you recommend? Okay, um, I'd probably play to the strength of the Material that's being used. Um, so if you wanted something glamorous that sort of fits that chandelier um, sort of feeling, um, I'd probably go for something like our uh, Empire, no, Imperial. Nice. Yeah, it yeah. would work. Um, but yeah, something that's got those uh, those glass um, elements that's going to refract the light, so it feels a little bit glamorous, but. I'd keep it a little bit refined and something that's got a bit of a contemporary feel to yeah. it to work with that style of staircase. I think both of those, both the Empire and the Imperial, also are really great modern takes on um, people who are looking yeah, for the chandelier so. look without the traditional chandelier look. So, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Next question is in relation to bedside lamps and what are the factors that we should consider when choosing a bedside lamp and styling? Um, there's a couple of key things I tend to think about. First of all, again, is the lamp to serve a first of all function or is it also supposed to be a decorative statement within the piece? I also really think about what the footprint of that lamp is and what space that's going to take up on my bedside table yeah, and what point. else I want to have very on my point. bedside table. Um, I always try and go for relatively sturdy lamps as well mm -hmm. because quite often in the middle of the night in the dark, you're reaching out, you don't mm -hmm. want something that's um, quite fragile that could potentially be knocked over. Yeah. Um, for me, I've actually got the Corian lamps at home. They've got an inbuilt USB port, which is really handy. Oh, super handy. Yeah, because yeah, it means I don't have to have another charger on my yes. on my bedside table. Yeah. I'm able to actually just plug my phone into my charger port, which plugs yes. into the lamp. That's less cords, yeah. all of that. Absolutely. Um, and they're a really great sort of balanced hero piece. Okay, small footprint on the base of the, yeah. the bedside table. So it's still got room for everything else. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but obviously they could be out into a wider shade, so there's quite a good yeah. statement piece there. Yeah. But I think regardless of the style that you're going for, 
There's so many great labs that are on offer now that have that inbuilt USB port, which is really handy. Yeah. Um, we do even also sell some lamps where you've actually got just a, a charging mat on them as well. So you can actually yeah, that's true. Yeah, you can just the phone straight down yeah. to it and stuff charging yeah. automatically. And yeah, even the, the styles and designs that are out there yeah. you know, add, add a nice take for touch as well, definitely. Absolutely. So we've got another question here from somebody who's looking to mix two of our really fantastic hero pieces together mm -hmm. in their home, the Leon and the Belay. Okay. Um, and they're yeah. interested to know, do you think they will clash? Um, yeah, I think if you're looking at using two large statement pieces, uh, especially if you're in an open plan area, um, I think it's really important to stay consistent with the materials and colors if they're sort of, um, so slightly different styles. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, those two pieces definitely have similar shape and form. Um, but yeah, I think if they're going to be in an open plan space or in close proximity to each other, um, then yeah, I think definitely keeping it consistent as far as the actual materials and colours go. Yeah. So I'd just try and stick to the same kind of palette. It's um, a good order, I think, um, go for sisters rather than twins. Yes. So you want to make sure that yes. they look similar to each other. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, but not too different. Anymore. Not too different. So next we're going to talk about a few garden lighting scenarios. First question is, I currently have a harsh spotlight for my garden. What's an alternative lighting arrangement I can use that's going to be a little bit more welcoming? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it sort of depends on what it's used for, what that yeah. outdoor space is going to be used for. In many ways, I think outdoor approaching outdoor lighting is no different to indoor. You've mm -hmm. really got to think about one, how do you use the space, yeah. and then two, how can you introduce layers into the space and bring it to light? Yeah. Um, I think you know we light a garden with the idea that it's for visual of the night time. Mm -hmm. So yeah. um, I think we can think about some task lighting. So if you've got like a veranda area or a barbecue, how you can light that. But then also maybe some backdrop lighting as well, like a really great top roll system that you could put in, which is DIY. Yeah, like a system, pretty simple. Yeah. Install, like the Gigo range that we've spoken about um, earlier. Absolutely. Yeah. And then just play out things like, you know, uplighting trees in your backdrop. That's going to yeah. help to add some drama and um, depth to your, your backyard as yeah, well. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, spotlights certainly have their place in an outdoor setting. But it's, yeah, it's about putting them in the right area and utilising them properly yeah. for um, service areas down the side of a house yeah. or something, or near a barbecue. Um, not necessarily just flooding an entire area. Nighttime backyard cricket. Absolutely. You probably use that. Yeah, definitely. I think the one place to spotlight for me is a bit of a no no, is if that's what your welcoming light is at your front door. So there are definitely. a lot of homes yeah. over the years where they've put the old parkway spotlights in. And someone who's that's walking up to your home and not to worry that yourself gets blasted with this can be a little bit blinding. Very glaring. Yeah. yeah. I'd just be going for something that's got a diffuser on it or even a great up down light. There's a lot of great outdoor brackets that you can actually mount um, on the wall that's actually going to wash light up and down like your render or a brick. That can be a lot more inviting to the space. Absolutely, as well. yeah. Beautiful light feature against the wall yeah. stuff. Yeah. Between my house and garden, I have no lighting currently. Is there a simple lighting scheme I can incorporate that doesn't require too much electrical rewiring? Um, to this scenario, I'd probably start looking at some 12 volt wiring yeah. kits that are simple to install yourself. Um, over the weekend, a nice simple DIY project. Yeah. Plug it into an outdoor PowerPoint and you can play around with different garden lighting options and bollards and things like that to line the garden and upline trees sort of small features throughout the, uh, the garden area. Um, yeah, I think that's probably the simplest way to yeah. do it without getting an electrician involved that's going to be quite labour intensive. I think there's a lot of, yeah, there's a lot of great fixture options that you do. You've got spikes, you've got bollards, you've got deck lights, yeah, all those sorts of things. Um, and being 12 volt, obviously, as you said, it is DIY, so it doesn't require, it doesn't have to put a meter on the ground. No, you definitely exactly. can do it yourself. Yeah. And then because of that, it actually means you can move it around. So as you might have a you know a shrub that you're up lighting mm -hmm. and it grows into a bigger tree, you'll actually be able to move that spotlight where you want. Yeah. I think one of the other, other bonuses as well with 12 volt systems is they're extremely safe. Mm -hmm. So you know you're just going to hide those cords, whether it be a little bit of dirt or under some tan bark. If somebody happens to you know touch yeah. it or whatnot, kind of a shovel or something doing some exactly. gardening, dogs decide to. 
dig a hole and chew it. Um, it's okay. a lot safer system for, for homeowners. Yeah. yeah. And all the fittings, you know, nowadays typically have that plug and play system. It's all water tight. You know, you get water and things getting in there, making it unsafe. So, um, yeah, a very simple, safe project for the weekend that yeah. you can change and move around. And that can absolutely enhance the entire look in the backyard. Oh, absolutely. Okay, that's it for today, guys. Thanks for spending time with us and sending through all those great questions. We really appreciated it. If you have any more questions about lighting, please feel free at any time to come in and speak to the experts at Beacon Lighting in any one of our stores, or even jump online to our website or any one of our social channels, because here at Beacon, we're here to help you with brighter. Thanks. Thanks, Beacon.